Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a giant graphic novel book haul. I am so excited to be adding a bunch to my TBR because Let's Get Graphic really depleted my collection. I do still have a few. They're kind of like behind me, all of my graphic novels and comics and stuff. It's these two shelves. Um, but I did read a bunch of them and I only have a few that are unread. So I definitely wanted to stock up for like the rest of the year and the next round of Let's Get Graphic which let me know if you want it to be a once a year readathon or if you would like to see a second round this year. Let me know in the comment section down below. But I had so much fun and I just needed to stock up. So um, I have a bunch here to share with you. They came from different sources. Some I bought in person. Some I got from like random websites. Some I got from Amazon. Some are ones you've probably never heard of. And some are ones that I got recommended through the graphic novel readathon. So Let's go ahead and get started with the first one. It is Keeping Two by Jordan Crane. And I absolutely love the rounded corners of this. Um, and the colors are all like neon green and dark green. And I really like that. But it has no synopsis on the book. But what it does have is this art print from Jordan Crane. So here's the art print and it is signed, which I had no idea it was going to come with this, but it just came in the book and I was like shocked. Um, so I'm just going to read the synopsis off of Goodreads. It says a young couple is stuck in traffic, reading a book aloud to each other to pass the time. The relationship is already strained, but between the encroaching road rage and a novel that hits way too close to home, tensions are running especially high by the time they arrive back at their apartment. When one of them leaves to get takeout in a movie, each of the young lovers is individually forced to confront loss, grief, fear, and insecurities in unexpected and shocking ways. Unfamiliar by Haley Newsom, and this is one that both Keisha and Elizabeth both thread, and I know a lot of you guys picked it up as well. Um, so I picked it up on that recommendation, but the colors are like these pastelis with pops of color, and it says, Meet Planchette, a lonely young kitchen witch. She has high hopes for her new home, a place where she can finally be herself and maybe even make friends. Unfortunately, she discovers that her perfect house is haunted, really haunted. So it's all about her like trying to get rid of that and stuff. But here's a peek of the graphics and I'm just really excited. It's a short one. I know this has been adapted from a webtoon, so I'm a tiny bit worried because I don't have the best luck with those but they both rated it five stars and I think I will too. Also, if any graphic novel wants to have a character list on the front to save me the trouble of making a character list, bonus points. I am so nostalgic for the Babysitter's Club and Sweet Valley High because those are two series that I read when I was younger and they have adapted the Sweet Valley High um, book. So this is Sweet Valley Twins, um, Best Friends by Nicole Anderfinger and Claudia Agori. And jump back into the world of these twins and it has like lots of pinks and you know just bright colors. So I'm looking forward to this one. Um, identical twins Jessica and Elizabeth have always been inseparable for 12 years. They have dressed alike, shared a room, the whole deal, but middle school is a chance for new beginnings or at least one of them thinks so. Elizabeth is excited for a new year with her best friend and other half while Jessica is excited for something different. Next up is A First Time for Everything by Dan Sinat and this is a graphic novel memoir about his life while he was in middle school and he goes goes on a trip to Europe and he discovers a lot of firsts and has a lot of firsts. So it says he's used to feeling invisible after being bullied in middle school. Dan has low expectations about everything, including the class trip to Europe with the same girls who love to make fun of him. But during his travels, a series of firsts began to change him. First Fanta, first fondue, and maybe even first girlfriend. Funny, heartfelt, and embarrassingly true, this graphic novel memoir is based on this author's most awkward middle school memories. And I also like the art in this one. And as you can see, the Eiffel Tower there. The next one is the Montague Twins, The Witch's Hand by Nathan Page, Andrew Shannon. And I got this on recommendation from Caitlin at Pride and Paperback. She read this one and enjoyed it. And then I know Elizabeth picked up a copy because of her recommendation. And then I was like, well, I need it too, because I heard it's like Hardy Boys-esque 
mystery. Um, on a lazy summer day, a sudden storm leads these amateur detectives to a mysterious box that holds long buried secrets. With those secrets unearthed, an explosive chain of events begins that challenges everything they have ever known. But there are people in their sleepy New England town who want to keep their secrets buried, and the Montague twins are a threat that needs to be stopped. Can they prevail over the powers that be, or will they meet a terrible fate? Join them on their thrilling adventure. The art looks like... I love mystery graphic novels just as much as I love mystery books. So I'm looking forward to this one. I also got Lightfall. Um, I got this on recommendation from a lot of people. Um, I saw a lot of people reading it and then they were like, when, if you haven't read it, you need to. Um, this is book one by Tim Probert. And in the land of Irpa, an ancient threat awakens, obsessed with plunging the world into eternal darkness. Luckily, Chance enlists two unsuspecting heroes to save the day. So cool. Okay, then I got Forest Hills Bootleg Society. Um, this is um, about Brooke and her friends, and they have a plan. It says, a plan so big it might change their entire lives. A plan that involves low-key copyright infringement, minor automobile theft, and a secret business that runs strictly on cash. What they don't plan on are Brooke and Kelly's new romance, Melissa being caught in the middle, or Maggie suddenly feeling left out. So it sounds like it's gonna be like a friendship story as well. And that's what those graphics look like. I think it has that muted, yes, it has that same kind of tone throughout the whole book. Um, the next one is the Tea Dragon Festival, which is the follow-up to the Tea Dragon Society, which I have on my shelf somewhere. It's probably behind me. But yeah, this is the second one and I absolutely loved the first one. I'm glad to see that this one is a little bit longer, but the little tea dragons in here, y'all, are so cute. Like, look at the end papers. And then, I mean, how cute. I love it. Like, here's one of the little tea dragons. Look. Like, I promise you, you're going to just read this and want your very own tea dragon. The art is very beautiful. It's very whimsical, very fantasy, um, but super fun. Yeah. So this will be a super quick read because it's super short and there's not a lot of words at all on the page. Okay, next up is Hollow, which I actually had my eye on this before the readathon, but I didn't get a chance to pick it up until after. And then Kendall from a book for you read it and she actually really liked this one. It's like a sleepy hollow inspired graphic novel. So when she rated it very highly, I was like, okay, I definitely need to get my hands on it now. I might save this for around Halloween time. I don't really know, but I'm really excited that I decided to pick this up. Next up is Another Kind by Kate May and Trevor Bream. This kind of reminded me a little bit of Stranger Things. Um, look at these kids on the front. Um, another kind of monster story. Tucked away in a government facility nicknamed the Playroom, six not quite human kids learn to control their strange and unpredictable abilities. Life is good or safe, at least hidden from the prying eyes of a judgmental world. That is until a security breach forces them out of their home and into the path of the collector, a mysterious being with leech-like powers. Can the group band together to thwart the collector's devious plan or will they wind up the newest addition to his collection? So, like I said, it reminds me a little bit of, you know, Stranger Things, but not like, kind of like X-Men and stuff like that too. So I'm very excited to dive into this one. Um, next up is Batter Royale. And this is one that my friend Jessie from Reading with Jess read. And she doesn't read a lot of graphic novels, but she rated this one five stars. So I was like, okay, I immediately need to read this. It's a great British Bake Off meets um, check please in this tale of sugary hijinks, fresh romance, and spicy competition. It also has recipes in it, which Jessie told me. So we have chocolate truffles and it has like the directions and stuff how to make them. So I think that's gonna be a super fun one. And this is kind of what the graphics look like. 
next up is swim team by it's swim team small waves big changes by johnny christmas and this was one that keisha read and really enjoyed this girl brie who is going to a new middle school and she stuck with the only elective that fits her schedule which is swim she really wanted to do something with math um it says the thought of swimming makes Brie more than a little queasy, yet she's forced to dive headfirst into one of her greatest fears. Luckily for her, Etta, an elderly occupant of her apartment building and former swim team captain, is willing to help. This is what the art and that one looks like okay next up is a donuts and doom and i picked this up because of the cover it's absolutely gorgeous and this is what the back looks like margo is a stressed out witch trying to get her potions business off the ground and elena is a struggling rock musician whose band is going nowhere they're both having a bad day no wonder their first meeting quickly escalates emotions run high magic fills the air sparks fly and donuts float <laughs> And then I have Enter the Blue. Um, this is about jazz. Um, I'll show you the art first. Let me see. It has a great color palette. Kind of like blues and other like pops of color. This one says, enter the blue. For decades, seasoned players on the scenes have spoken in whispered tones about the blue, a mysterious meeting place for jazz history, a place where ghosts from this music's storied past spring to life for those courageous enough to enter it. When Jesse Choi's mentor Jimmy Hightower collapses at a gig and loses consciousness, she finds herself reluctantly pulled back into a jazz scene she abandoned years earlier. In investigating the music and mystery behind Jimmy's comatose state, every thread leads to the same question. Is Jimmy somehow trapped in this enigma known as the blue. She rubs shoulders with legends, uncovers a conspiracy in the history of the Blue Note records, and faces her own deepest fears. And this is from a musician and cartoonist, um, Eisner Award nominated author of acclaimed graphic novel Chasing the Bird. Enter the Blue will captivate and inspire musicians and non musicians of all ages. Next up is Ballad for Sophie, which Elizabeth so kindly sent this my way. Um, it didn't come with her note though. I was so sad. The only reason I know was she was like hinting that she was going to send it and then it arrived like when she said it was going to. So yeah, she sent me this one. I have been wanting to read this one for years. In 1933 in a small French village, a local piano contest brings together two brilliant young players. Um, Julian, the privileged heir of a wealthy family, and Francois, the janitor's son. One wins, one loses, and both are changed forever. I love the art style of this, and I have been wanting to get my hands on this one for years. So thank you so much, Elizabeth. I am so grateful for our friendship and for you sending this my way. I cannot wait to read it. She said don't flip through it, but I have a hard time because graphic novels are so floppy. Next up, two more, is Summer Fires. And um, I've never heard anybody talk about this one, but I love the color palette of it. It starts with these like dark, it start, well actually it starts with this like soft orange color, and then it moves on to a dark orange color. And then it has a dark yellow and then it moves on to a soft yellow um, but this one um, this is the author let's see right here at the top I don't know how to say this name but it says it's this you know author's first long-form graphic novel it follows the story of two sisters Rachel and Sabrina as they come of age in a typical Italian town the two find themselves faced with the tough choices of teenage life which mirrors the fires in the surrounding hillsides in the town as one decision or another leads to unsettled feelings and desires this wonderfully and meticulously illustrated tale takes all of the consternation and heartbreak of youth and puts it on display in a beautiful beautiful and subdued package. Summer Fire is represented here for the first time in English. So this was originally obviously written in Italian in Italy and now it's translated into um, English and I'm very excited because it looks like it's going to be a good story and I, like I said I love the color palette. The last one is one that Keisha has been telling me to pick up for pretty much the whole time I've known her and that is Bear. It looks like a children's book, um, but it is a graphic novel. Um, it's by Ben Queen, 
and this is about a seeing eye dog named Bear. Bear is one very unique dog. Bear is a guide dog who would do anything for his owner and best friend Patrick who is blind. When Bear suddenly loses his vision, he worries he's lost his purpose in life protecting Patrick. So it's all about that journey and you go from like when he is a little puppy and kind of like the training and stuff like that. So I'm just really looking forward to reading this one and I know it's going to cause all of the emotions. Don't know if I'm here for it, but I'm excited. So those are the graphic novels that I have picked up since the end of Let's Get Graphic and I am so excited to start diving back into some new fun graphic novels. If you have any recommendations for me please leave them in the comment section down below and then also like I said at the beginning of the video let me know if you would like a second round of Let's Get Graphic this year or if you think it's super special to leave it and wait until next year. Anyway I will consider what you tell me down in the comment sections down below so definitely leave a comment down there but I hope you guys are having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye friends!